Christ, we've started. Okay, hello. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the Stephen and Joe show this week. Uh, my name's Stephen and his name's Joe. Hi. And um, yeah, so... Uh, still no sign of Glenn Miller then? No. no. Have you played Skyrim yet? I haven't played Skyrim You'll yet. never play that I'll damn game. I'll never play Skyrim. It's actually causing me... Um, Nothing. No, I just want you to play it. <laughs> just play the game. It's causing me nothing, damn it. <laughs> I was going to say it's causing me palpitations or <laughs> hot flushes, but... That's the studio it's, light. It's quite it, warm in here. It is the studio it's light. It's very hot in here, actually. It is. Yeah. I'm melting. I'm not melting. Play <laughs> Skyrim, Steve. Oh, well, eventually I will. Better. What I'm going to try and do is just make sure that you play Skyrim before one of these gets released. So by the time it re it's released, you're saying, oh, I haven't played Skyrim, but you actually, you actually have. have. Yeah, that would be, that'd be terrible. That would be tricksy of me. Well, it's a bank holiday coming up, so maybe. Well, we never know. It won't happen. You never know. It just won't happen. But, uh, yeah, have you been busy? Uh, yeah, I'm editing a lot and uh, writing again. I'm actually back Ooh. writing. Um not much, but enough to, to sort of be a little bit interesting. But I'm actually working on something for Christmas this year. So I'm doing it now so that I don't go, oh, it's Christmas, I'll do this thing for Christmas and have this massive rush and then just never get it done because other things happen. What kind of thing are you doing for Christmas? Uh, well, what I want to do, uh, and I started this last year and then gave up halfway through, mm -hmm. is the 12 days of Christmas. Brilliant. Uh, a story for each one. So there's going to be a story... That is semi-concerning drummers drumming and one that's kind of got made to milk. That kind of idea. I've written uh, is... three or four of them already, I did, which I did last year, so I'm editing those at the moment. And then uh, I'm going to, once a month, I'm going to buckle down and actually write uh, uh, the, the next story. And so I'll release them. Are these going to be um, text-based short stories? or Text-based they... short stories, yeah. Oh. I, I mean, unless something strange happens and we end up recording them and putting them on SoundCloud or something or you know but oh, yeah go, it's going to be something a bit different and um, a sort of a gift for everybody who finds it uh, for, for this Christmas uh, it's kind of nice yeah. like I, I know a lot of people say oh no too early to talk about Christmas too early to talk about Christmas it's never too early to talk about Christmas <laughs> it's, it's, it, it is nice to get, remind because, because if I can get this done and then I can get something done for Halloween as well and then <laughs> I've got all of the big holidays covered and then I'm fine I just uh, I think a lot of people are focused on summer at the moment and, and just the smell of barbecues that infests my mind. <laughs> I love barbecues so much. So, so when are we having the first barbecue of the year? I've already had the first barbecue of the year. Oh. Sorry. It wasn't around mine, otherwise I would have invited you. I, I'm on a diet, so I, I could have gone, but never mind. <laughs> uh, no, uh, baking in the sun is, is uh, a lovely pastime. Um Literally baking in the sun. Because <laughs> um, no. we had a couple of good days as well, didn't we? And then it went all rainy, and then yeah, it's kind yeah. of been off, off, off and on, off and on. Because you know, that's British summertime for you. If you if yeah. you don't know, if you've never lived in in Britain or had a summertime, then um, British summertime is mostly rainy with uh, some breaks in it for uh, cloud. <laughs> yeah. I was. Um, I missed summer last year. I was on the loo. <laughs> I, it was short last <laughs> yeah. year, oh, and the winter was long. Oh yeah, it was. It was. Winter really uh, was coming last year. But we don't really want to be the uh, uh, YouTube Weather Channel. So. No. Um, or in, or indeed the YouTube Game of Thrones channel, which I did. I, 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 you know nothing, John Snow, and no one was going to get that unless they've seen it. It's, it's... The thing is, I I loved all the the snow memes that came around, but I didn't love the fact that everybody felt the need to share every single one. Um, I there was a lot. These things happen. There was a lot of about snow this year, and I just seem to remember when it when I was younger, snow was much bad, worse. Yeah, it was. Uh, so why we seem to be having problems going to work? All of a sudden, I've got no idea. I because just... we like skiving, Steve. Uh, no, that's true, but, <laughs> you know. I, I, just... I, I have to work in Stroud, which is about a 40-minute journey away. Mm -hmm. And I got stuck once yeah. because of the traffic, not because the conditions were bad enough <laughs> to actually mean that I couldn't drive there. I couldn't get to work because the traffic just held me up so long that I went, yeah. fuck this, I'm going home. It's got to be done. Was it? Uh... I just I think a lot of difficulties were also that 
schools were shutting more regularly than they used to as well. I think schools have got ca- so caught up in sort of health and safety and mm. the well-being of the children and things like that. that they, just, they were just shutting at a moment's notice, meaning that parents were then we're, taking we're, we're days talking because about they politics. had to look about their, their I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah sorry. Sorry. Because so, this isn't about politics. This is about stuff and things and... Welcome to the Stephen and Joe show. Hi, hello. <laughs> I've been mostly watching uh, Tucker and Dale versus Evil, which oh is an God. absolutely fantastic film. I love that film so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's if you've seen Cabin in the Woods, um, you kind of know uh, the direction that it's going. But this kind is of. a little bit. Um, a little bit more surreal, a little bit sillier, and and funnier because of that. And um, it's meant to be. It's not the it, 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 not for any. It's not one of those horror films that you watch, uh, and it's so bad that you have to laugh at it. It's actually quite well well done and well put together. Um, the basic premise is uh, that uh, Tucker and Dale have bought a cabin in the woods. This was made well before Cabin in the Woods, so it's not. It's not something that's that's influenced by it. It's not like no. a scream, no. um, scary movie takeoff thing. Uh, it, it, yeah, I think it's influenced by many many horror films. Yes, and not, but but not but in the not, same way that not, scary movie is. No, it's not like a parody. Yeah. Um, so Tucker and Dale uh, are two hillbilly types who've bought a cabin uh, in the woods on their way up to the cabin because they're going to renovate it. They pass some uh, college kids who mistake them for evil hillbilly types that are the kind who are going to rape and murder you in your beds. I, I just love how hysterical the mistaken identity is. <laughs> the way that Tucker and Dale are so... Honest, well-meaning, and yeah. and, and, yeah. and innocent in a really lovely way, and the way they, the way they end up looking to these sort of young collegey types, it's, it's so menacing. It's, it's a I great just, shot was, right at the beginning. Fits of tears right at, at the beginning. There's a, there's a great moment where the uh, the college kids are in the car and they pass them in the pickup truck and they're just, um, is it Tucker the woman with the beard? Uh, he's just looking out the window at them, and it's so good. and he sort of looks menacingly, and then it cuts to them uh, in in inside the cab of this this thing, and it's like, why do you think they're here? And they're just really ex- excited to see other people there. It's great. It's uh... I, I think it's helped by the fact that the casting is so strong in that film. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, the actors who play Tucker and Dale couldn't. I I, I wouldn't have actually put them together. No, I suppose not. I suppose not. But then they did a great job, and they they do kind of fit the um, uh, the, the physical stereotypes to it. Uh, yeah. Just sort of. Uh, there's some wonderfully funny moments in it, and there's some gruesome moments in it as well. It's not a, it, you know there's there's enough nastiness in there to keep a horror fan interested, mm. but um, done in such a way that uh, I don't know. It just it's. It really is a laugh out loud film. It's it, not there's some it, moments where I went, oh no, he didn't. But then at the same time, it really is a laugh out loud the, film. There's some there's some great sort of horrible, gory moments, but in a fun way of if you're enjoying horror movies, you'll you'll get all of the the fun parts yeah. of that. Um, and if you've seen Scream or any of the recent releases, any of the new uh, Nightmare on Elm Street remakes, or the wrong house on the left or the hills have hillbillies or whatever it is um the hills have hillbillies the hills have hillbillies that's amazing yeah we should make that that. film we should do that (laughs) that's the summer project right yes (laughs) ah dear Uh, but if you've seen anything like that um you're gonna know where all of this is coming from if you've seen any sort of horror film Mm. at all you'll know where all of this is coming from and you'll get the jokes very very easily because they in some instances, they really are literally a slap in the face, aren't they? <laughs> um, the thing is, what I did find fun is that um, Tyler Labine, who plays um, Dale, mm-hmm. uh, was Burt Wysocki in Reaper. 
the TV yeah. series. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and I did feel that they had understood what type of comedy he was good at. Yeah, and they did really and, play to it as well, didn't they? played they? to his strengths. Mm. And Alan Tudyk, uh, who Who's is Tucker, is Tucker uh, has been in other films. Uh, he's Steve the Pirate in Dodgeball, and he's he's Wash in Firefly. And again, mm. it, it's like they, they cast someone who they understood how funny he can be yeah, and yeah. played to strengths. Mm. Uh, and actually, that's one of the things that makes them more believable because... They, they, the things that they bring to their characters is the things that you go, oh, well, that that's not how menacing hillbillies are meant to sound like. Yeah. But Be- because they brought that that to them, and I think that, it's one of the things that makes it so good. And the friendship that they have as as Tucker and Dale yeah. is is it's it all brilliant. Se- it all seems very natural. Yeah. You know, that yeah they're just does. doing what it they're does. doing, and it mm. just it makes it very fun and mm. and and weirdly heartwarming. At moments as well. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> <That's just laughs> uh, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil is available on Netflix at the moment if you haven't seen it, and uh, at all good uh, video stores. If your store doesn't have it, it's not a good video store. So, uh, this week in games, I've been playing on my iPad again. Uh, this time I've been playing Simon the Sorcerer. Now... I love that game. It, I remember that game so when I was when I was a, a kid, and it was the first PC I had, and it had a copy of Simon the Sorcerer with it. Back in the day, uh, Simon the Sorcerer was made by Adventure Soft, and it was a point-and-click adventure game in the style of uh, King's Quest, um, the Westwood series of games, which is things like um, Full Throttle uh, and uh, Day of the Tentacle, and things like and that. Sam so, and Max. Yeah, yeah, Sam and Max. Which, uh, a, a lot of these things have been released or revamped or episodic mm. um, but this is the original Simon the Sorcerer um, but it's been just given a slightly different control mechanism in order for it to be used on a touch-based surface like an iPad. Has it got the voices with it as well? It still has oh, the original voices. Fantastic. They haven't They haven't revamped it in terms of the visuals or the, or the audio. It's still the original game um, and what they've done with the control mechanism is, is slightly different from a lot of the ports that I've seen previously. Um, in some of my previous reviews I've talked about things like Beneath a Steel Sky, um, which had an improved audio and score uh, and the control mechanism was absolutely brilliant. But with Simon the Sorcerer, um, what they've done control-wise is in the top left-hand corner of the screen They've made it so you can choose two ways to navigate around. You can either choose a mouse pointer that follows your finger as you drag it around the screen, allowing you to essentially still use a mouse for a point and click game, or a touch screen. But they've done a really clever thing of when you put your finger on the screen, it comes up with a box around your finger, zoomed in with an X in the middle, to show where your pointer is clicking. Now for a game that had a lot of segments where you were moving your mouse pointer over various parts of the ga- game to find out what they were, it makes it very key to playing the game. Um, but I found with that flexibility on how you do it, it, although slightly odd at first, it actually made it easier to continue playing the game as it was intended to be played originally. Um, so it just plays as it did before. It's quite a user-friendly game. There's a lot of conversation tree choices uh, and there's a lot of finding items combining items to carry on with the storyline um the setting for the game of simon the sorcerer is a very fun one uh it a lot of the it's a fantasy setting but a lot of the humor that is injected in it gives it a very terry pratchett-esque feel to it in terms it's of interesting you mentioned that actually dwarves. because mm. The reason that I got my first PC, the reason I made a, a change from the Amiga, I had an Amiga 600, um, and went to kind of the PC, was because I wanted to get the Discworld game. Which were also brilliant. Which were also brilliant. And voiced by Tony Robinson and, and John Pertwee and yeah. you know, this plethora of stars. Um, and then Simon the Sorcerer actually came with my computer as well. And so once I'd done Discworld, I actually sat and did Simon the Sorcerer, and I loved it. It's phenomenal. I, it's brilliant. I think a lot of I've it... literally just bought it on my iPad. I got both of them. I got one and two. They're one forty nine each. Yeah. You can't go far wrong. That's it. For the price that they are, and considering you've got the uh, voice talent of Chris Barry, uh, also known as Rimmer in Red Dwarf, uh, or, or the Butler in uh, Tomb Raider. Yes. Uh, it's just fantastic. His dry sense of humour runs throughout the games, and. 
they make the whole thing just I, I just find the whole thing hilarious um just in terms of it uh, the character simon's approach to the world and is it's very droll and stoic but it just it's the humor in it's fantastic very deadpan yeah, yeah. very british i would say Yes, you're um, right. It is actually, but it's it's just a great fun game to play. And, and actually, if you like that kind of well. humor, that kind of Monty Python esque yeah. humor yeah, as well, then then do go for it because it is it is like that. And in fact, a lot of the puzzles that you solve have got that same sort of humor in it, and it make, really does make you think in a very funny way. <laughs> yes, uh, and I did find that it makes a lot of references to standard fantasy things mm -hmm. uh, and even fairy tales it, it mentions the billy goats gruff and wise old owls and things like that and it, it is worth just exploring it and the music actually although in place is slightly repetitive mm. um it's it's well scored in terms of nice background music that doesn't become irritating too quickly um so yeah i really enjoyed it and for the price it's ridiculously cheap so it, it is yeah. it is very very good um, yeah well that was this week's show um next week we'll be taking a look at another video and probably another game probably yeah maybe maybe and i probably won't have still played skyrim but there we go We'll see you next week. See you next week.